Kevin, thanks for joining us. It's um, it's always a little bit sad when we have to come to, to these interviews and I guess in some ways all great things come to an end, but the decision has been made from your side um, to, to retire from the professional side of darts. Can you just tell us a bit about how you're feeling at the minute and, and how the decision came around? Yeah, I'm feeling all right, Dave, um, to be honest. Um, I thought I'd feel a little bit differently. Um, I've been sort of thinking about it for 18 months or so, different circumstances uh, that sort of got me thinking about it. Um, but I thought, um, if I didn't get my card at Q score, I, I thought I was going to be really disappointed and, you know, and this it was going to be a bad time for me now. But it's not, I feel, in a strange way, I sort of feel like I've got a weight of expectation off of my shoulders from myself. You know, when you're still trying to play and get back on the tour, you and because I, I know I've still got the ability and then it's frustrating. And every time you turn up, you're trying harder and harder. And when it's not working, the expectation's still there, though. And uh, But I, I feel all right now that I've sort of made the decision not to not to carry on with it. I'm, I'm not packing up darts completely. I enjoy the game and that. But um, I'm just going to step back from the PDC side of things. And, um, yeah, I mean... I. I might have a bash at them Riley's things if they ever come up again, if I fancy a competition, but I'm still going to do some competitions and carry on with the exhibition work. But I think it's just time to step away from the the sort of rat race of these tours, um, challenge tour, what it would have been, and, um, you know, sort of stuff like that. I, I just don't want to do that anymore, Dave. And you've had the best part of 30 years competing as well. You know, people probably don't appreciate that it was back in the early 90s when you actually first started competing on the BDO circuit and obviously about a decade later you moved on to the PDC. Yeah, uh, like you say, 94. I've, I've been a professional for 25 years now um, and obviously I've been playing for, well, about 83, 84 was when I first sort of picked up a set of darts and that, so... Um, it's been a long time and, um, you know, it's, it's been great all the way along. You know, I've enjoyed it. I've, you know, I've been very fortunate to play in some of the things I've played in, go to the places I've been. And, yeah, it's been an enjoyable time, though. Mm. You must look back with pride as well over what you've achieved during your career because I know the Players' Championship final stands out as the big TV title you won, but, you know, you've won a handful of PDC ranking titles reached that famous World Championship final, being in the Premier League. So there are so many proud moments, I guess, that you can look back on in your career as well. Yeah, I've been involved in it. Look, you know me well enough, Dave. It's all about stage play for me. Um, these floor events um, just done my nut in. Um, I could never get my um, top performances going on the floor for whatever reason. It was just all about playing on the stage. I got the buzz from the game by playing in, in the big... TV events, and I had some great moments, different different venues. Um, Ali Pally, apart from winning the Players' Championship at, at Doncaster, the Circus Tavern in Ali Pally, the World Championships where I had most of my um, great moments. Obviously, I beat Phil at the Grand Prix in, in Dublin and that um, when I first come over to the PDC. But, um, yeah, just some had some great games, and they're the moments you sort of play darts for, you know? That 2001 World Grand Prix win over Phil, that, that was something that really announced you on the PDC circuit as well, wasn't it? Because at that time, I think Phil had won the first three competitions in the World Grand Prix. He'd never been beaten in that tournament until this upstart came came along. And, and that started quite a good rivalry between the two of you as well. Yeah, when I first came over, I, I, I played in a qualifier as well. And, and I'd done well against him the previous year. We drew each other two years on a trot. I think a few people sort of forgot about that. They just... A lot of people think that was the first time we'd ever played and never met on that stage and that, but I'd played him the year before in the first round as well and come through that as a qualifier, but he'd beat me then and I had a good chance to beat him. But, um, yeah, I think from then it was like, you know, this is this is good. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this. And my first few years there, I got to the World Semis in um, 2003 and obviously our great final, so I sort of, come into it pretty quick with a bang and uh, I had some I had some really good times. Um, sort of, it, it started to um, sort of go downhill a bit around about 2014. I started to find it harder to enjoy the events. Obviously, I was enjoying the TV events. It was the floor stuff around about that time 
um, I just couldn't get my head around. I weren't when you sort of look forward to going away and playing your games and that. I, I only look forward to going to the TV events. Just didn't look forward to going to the the floor events. And um, when you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're working that makes it twice as hard you know you've got to play against these great players and if you mentally you're not right then that's going to be difficult I guess looking back at the, the all of all the games in your career the probably the two that stand out that win over Mark Webster to win the players championship finals and that world championship game probably the world championship won first Kev you know what are your memories of that because we all look back so fondly on that as a, as a fantastic game you, you went so close to becoming world champion yeah I mean the I wasn't, even when I'd come off the stage after that game, it wasn't like, you know, I'm devastated. I thought, you know, it sort of announced me even further, as if to say, you know, I can mix it up there with the likes of Phil. I mean, most players were frightened to death of Phil. You know, he'd won his games before he got up there. But although my record against Phil was really poor, I always, nine times out of ten, really, I, I gave him a really good game. And that final, I wasn't sort of um, worried about playing him at all. I actually thought I was going to win. I'd had a good win in the semis against Bob Anderson, um, you know, 6-0. And, um, you know, I was set up for a really good final. And the only disappointment out of it, probably other than obviously not winning it, would have been that I didn't get a shot at a double. We, we played on stage for three and three-quarter hours, nearly four hours. And I sort of earned a shot at a double to win it and never got one. That, that's that's the main disappointment for me because I think if I'd have got one, I'd have got it. Um, and I left one several times um, in that in that um, final set, but uh, Phil being a bit greedy, he never gave me a shot. <laughs> I mean, look, it was it was a, a great moment. When you did finally get the shot to win a major, though, you did that, the Players' Championship Finals back in 2011 against Mark Webster. And I think we could all see from your reaction on that when you dropped to your knees just how much it meant to, you know, to join that, that group of players to win a big TV tournament. Yeah, I mean, it was a relief to win one. Uh, once I'd got to 2011, and you start to wonder if you have had, you know, your best chances of winning a TV major. And... I got myself in a good position in that in that match, and I thought I'm not going to throw this away now because I, I might not get another chance. And um, got it straight away and got got the match out of the way with one double as soon as it came around. Because you know if you mess around, sometimes you don't get another go. But um, it, it was sort of relief and sort of um, the pleasure of doing it. There's going to be thousands of players that won't win a TV major. There'll be even more that won't get to a world championship final. You know, I've played in the Premier League. I think I should have played two or three more times in the Premier League, but didn't. Um, I've, you know, I've won a TV major, been in a final and played in the Premier League. It's, it's, it's not bad, really. I think I underachieved in some ways, um, but a lot of that you could look at, that was because you clashed with Phil. Um, you know, Phil's winning everything. If Phil weren't about, I'm pretty sure I'd have, well, I'd have won a world title for a start. And, I might have won several other um, majors that we played in that Phil took me out in the semis or whatever when I was on a good run. But, you know, there's plenty of other players that could say exactly the same if it weren't for Phil and, and things like that. But, um, no, I can look back and, you know, I've done a lot, lot of decent things. I, I think I could have won a bit more, but I've done a lot of decent things. A lot of players that have a hard time nowadays to, um, to emulate, you know. Hmm. That, that 2012 Premier League season as well. I know you're a big stage player and playing in those big arenas, it just looked like that was maybe the, the stage that you, you really relished that, didn't you? You actually, I know it, it's probably unfair to say that you finished seventh because you're only two points off the playoffs and, and you were really competitive throughout that season and you just looked like you were at home on those big stages. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I knew I would do. Um, the bigger the crowd, the better. Um, I loved every single minute of that Premier League. It, it was fantastic. And, and in a way, I was absolutely useless on the Pro Tour that year or that six months or four, five months, whatever we was on that Premier League because all I could think about was the Premier League night. And we'd come off of that on a Thursday uh, and then Friday you're travelling off to the Pro Tour. All I was thinking about was the following Thursday night because um, it was so exciting and uh, loved it. Um, like you say, I, I was seventh out of the eight players, but um, 
it was only the last game, the very last game, um, that if I'd have won it, I'd have been in the semi-finals. And um, Hammer won it. And uh, the rest is history. And he got an invite back next year and I didn't, which was a bit of a shame, I thought. But um, no, I loved it, Dave. Premier League was fantastic. It had been a bit of a disappointment if I'd have never played in one of them as well. And then we kind of look and, you know, you've, you've been off to Vegas, you reached the semis in Vegas, the final in China back in 2004 when what was probably a forerunner of the World Series, you, you played for England, you played at Lakeside as well. You know, so many achievements all, over that career. I hope, you know, now you can look back with, you know, a, a lot of fondness on that. Yeah, I've, I've like you mentioned, um, playing for England and that. You're proud to play for your country. Um, I've got some of my original shirts from that. And, you know, now and again, you look at them and, yeah, you know, you got. I have to look back, and instead of thinking I'm disappointed, I'm stopping now. Because I, I mean, to be fair, I, I'm not stopping because I'm not good enough. I, I'm stopping because of a few other reasons. But um, I don't want to keep chasing stuff that's just. It's not. I wouldn't say it's diff, too difficult to achieve. It's just um, I keep repeating the same mistakes all the time, and it's not. Over the last three years, I've lost too many games. That I should have won and had chances to win and messed it up. And it's the concentration levels, I, I think. If you if you had to narrow it down to maybe one thing, I suppose it would say I, I don't I can't concentrate as well as I used to do um, over the distance of, of games. But um, you know, I have to instead of being disappointed about it, I have to look back at these moments and think, well, yeah, I've done that as well, and I've done that, and we went there and you know, and it was all good fun. A lot of it was great in the earlier days. We were in Vegas, Benidorm, Canada, you know, fantastic places. It, it just got, I know the PDC is going to say, well, we had to make it more professional and whatever, but in my opinion, it was still professional back then in those venues. I know some of the venues got became difficult, but when it started getting put in sports halls, um you know, all black curtains hanging around the room in Barnsley. I just walked in there and my head just, your mind goes. And um, I just didn't deal with that mentally very well. And uh, it's that sort of side of bit, bit, bits and pieces weren't for me, Dave, really. And also, I guess, that just finally, you, you can look back and, you know, tell your grandkids in a few years' time that, you know, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Phil when he was at his best. You knocked out Barney when he was reigning world champion, the first event at Ali Pali. You've played on, you know, 20 world championships and you know world match play and, and things like that there's a lot there that you can take take away for away from it and, and look back on that yeah of course um you know like you say I, i'm proud of you know what it's 25 years of just uh good memories really if, you, if i sat down and analyzed it for, for longer i hadn't really thought too much about it but if i analyzed it all and went from you know year to year and and, and things like that yeah i'm really pleased with how it went i'm not packing up I'm going to do tournaments that are still going about you know and a few more mates run tournaments I'll play in them and I'm going to carry on with my exhibitions and things and and carry on to see where we go I, I'm, I'm just not going to uh, um, chase chase the, uh, the Q school stuff and things like that and the challenge tour um, so but I, I'll look back and um, you know there's a lot of things to enjoy there though and just finally just a couple of quick little quick fire questions if we had to ask you to pick out a favourite venue from your career, what would you say? Um, well, <laughs> both the venues, we played the World Championships um, are my favourite venue. Circus Tavern was absolutely crackers, Dave, as you know, down there. You know, about a seven-foot ceiling there uh, and uh, hundreds of people in there. It's absolutely nuts. Um, that was great, the atmosphere in there. And of course, I, I, some of my great memories at Ali Pali. So um, they're, they're my they're my favourites as far as um, results-wise go, I think. But, uh, and obviously going to Vegas was like a dream, weren't it? You're going on holiday and playing darts on TV while you're there. I mean, you can't <laughs> beat that. Favourite opponent? Favourite opponent? Um, <laughs> no, I mean, look, Phil's caused me more misery than anyone, I suppose. But... Our battles were good, and even when you draw, Phil, it, it, not when it's like you know you're thinking, oh god, here we go again. Actually, when you walk on that stage and and play him and that, it, it's not you know it, it's just a great moment to play the best player in the world, you know. So um, no, yeah, I have to say my battles with Phil were memorable. Yeah.
And just finally, favourite match to, to take away as a memory? Well, I, I have to say winning the Players' Championship um, that got me over the line to win my, my major title, um, that would have to be it. It wasn't a classic match yet. Of course, a classic match would have been the final against Phil, um, which is what everybody talks about. But, um, you know, getting that final, that, that win against Webby um, has to be my favourite moment, though. Brilliant. Thanks, Kev. Thanks for all the memories. And uh, best wishes going forward as well. Cheers, Dave. See you again soon.